Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about leopard gecko care, specifically about substrate choices when it comes to leopard geckos. So this video isn't any kind of full leopard gecko care guides. I really do just want to focus on talking about substrate choices when it comes to leopard geckos, as a lot of us probably know, if you're already in the pet community, um, you probably know that substrate when it comes to leopard geckos can be quite controversial because there is a lot of different opinions. When there's so many different substrate choices available on the market, it can get a little confusing for some people to understand what's best for them. So I really wanna do this video so that maybe I can help some people figure out what substrate might be best for them. So now to better understand leopard gecko substrates, let's go ahead and head on into my reptile room. So here we are in my reptile room and in here I actually have three leopard gecko cages myself. And now the main reason that I wanted to do this video is because I sort of did an experiment over the past few months where I was experimenting with leopard gecko care. So let's dive into a little bit of history about my experience owning leopard geckos. So I have owned leopard geckos for six years now, um, you know, not a super long time, but I think that's a decent amount of time to gain a fair bit of knowledge and experience with them. And over those years, I've definitely formed my opinions on their care, what I think is best. So looking back even just a few months ago, I personally was under the impression that solid substrate is your best choice. I was someone who pretty well always used solid substrate. I have used paper towels, I have used carpet, I have used shelf liners, I have used tile all of that so I have a fair bit of experience with that. Recently, as a lot of you guys probably know, I have redone a lot of the cages in this room to be bioactive. As I got into the world of keeping bioactive enclosures and pets in bioactive cages, I really, really loved it. So I started thinking about the idea of bioactive leopard gecko cages, or maybe not even bioactive, but just more natural. So when setting up a bioactive leopard gecko cage, um, that required loose substrate, which is something that I had not really previously been a huge fan of. But I decided to try it out for myself because Anytime you're reading things online or you're watching videos or just whatever research you're doing, it's easy to form an opinion based on what you read, but I think it's very different to actually experience something yourself and form an opinion based off of that. So that is exactly what I did. So now my leopard gecko cage that you see right here, the one that my hand is on, is set up as a bioactive leopard gecko cage. I set it up a little bit ago. I think it's been a few months now. Don't know the exact timeline, but I wanted to essentially set it up and experiment with it to see how I liked the whole bioactive and loose substrate thing. So while I did set up this one cage bioactive, I didn't really do a whole lot to my other two cages. I left them the way that they were because I wanted to see how I liked this one cage before I did anything to the others. I did make slight changes to one of the cages, um, which we will go into detail about now. So this here is Pepper's cage. So Pepper's cage is the one that is set up with no loose substrate at all. It's all just tile. Ignore the fact that there's calcium everywhere. She loves to walk through her calcium and get it all over. But this is what Pepper lives in, so it's pretty well just completely tile on the ground here. And over here we have Sushi's cage. So Sushi's cage is fairly similar to Pepper's, except you will notice one main difference, and that is this little box over here. So this is actually the dig box. So here I wanted to experiment with care where they live primarily on solid substrate, which in this case is tile. But they also have the option to climb into this dig box and they can use it for some digging, which can be very enriching to them. So this is Sushi's cage. 
And lastly, we have Alani's cage. So this is the completely bioactive cage that I set up. And this one does in fact have pretty well all loose substrate, except for a few areas of the cage where it is, you know, stone and there's some excavator clay and all of that. But primarily it is using the Arcadia Arid Earth Mix substrate. So now that you've seen the cages and seen what I was trying to accomplish with this experiment, let's talk about what my results were. I essentially set up three different style enclosures and that is one that I just left with completely solid substrate. It has tile, there's no loose substrate in the cage, nothing loose. Then I set up a second enclosure which was primarily solid substrate with a little bit of loose substrate in there which was the dig box. And then lastly I set up the bioactive cage which is pretty well completely loose substrate of course with the exception of some rocks and the excavator clay and things that the gecko can climb on. So overall my opinions is that really I think all of them can work. Um, I think the tile can work just fine. I think tile with a dig box and I mean not just tile but solid substrate. Solid substrate with a dig box can work and I think that a completely loose substrate can work as well. There are a lot of people who seem to be against loose substrate and I do want to say your opinion is your own. It's completely fine. If you have a different opinion than me, that is 100% okay. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just giving my opinion, so it's totally fine to have a different opinion. I think that loose substrate can actually work just fine as long as you are taking proper safety precautions and you're, you know, using the correct substrates and things like that, which we will talk about a little more. And then I also think that the solid substrate can work just fine. Again, you just have to do research on the topic and make sure whatever substrate you choose, just make sure you're doing it correctly and safely and I think they can really work out fine. So let's talk about if you should use solid substrate or loose substrate. Now ultimately the decision is yours. I cannot tell you exactly what to do, but hopefully I can give you a little bit of insight on each one to maybe make the decision a bit easier. So I'm going to start out by talking about solid substrate and some of the pros to it. Some of the pros to solid substrate would include, um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, for example, with loose substrate, there's a little bit more to learn about it in order to do it safely. So solid substrate can be, you know, a little bit easier, especially if you're a beginner. It's also very easy to clean depending on the substrate you use. Um, for example, the tile that I have in my cages here, it's just so easy. You just wipe it down. It's very easy to clean. And then of course there's things like a lower risk of impaction and stuff because if you're using something like tiles, your gecko obviously isn't going to eat the tile. So that's a bonus. And now some of the cons to solid substrate would be depending on the choice that you use, it can harbor bacteria. That's not really an issue with tile or shelf liner, but say for example, if you're using paper towels and you're not changing them frequently, it can harbor bacteria. Or if you're using reptile carpet and you're not cleaning it regularly, that can harbor bacteria as well. Solid substrates like tiles and shelf liners and stuff, they also just, um, they're not super natural to the animal. In the wild, these guys are walking on fairly hard surfaces. It's sort of a hard, compacted, clay, dirt-like surface. So while it's not like a loose sand or anything, it's not like just a solid, hard tile. So it's not the most natural, but I don't really think that's always a bad thing. I don't think you have to have a totally naturalistic setup for an animal to do well. But there's always that to consider. Now some people also think solid substrates like tile and such can be hard on their joints because of the fact that it's so hard. I really don't know about this. I haven't looked too much into how their joints react on really solid surfaces, but from the small amount of research that I did do, it does seem like that's not really a huge issue as long as you're using a surface that they can grip on easily. So if example, you were using like really shiny slippery tiles, yes, that would be an issue. But if you're using ones that they can grip onto, that's normally not that big of an issue. And now when it comes to loose substrate, there are obviously pros and cons to it as well. So some of the pros to loose substrate would be it allows them some more enrichment opportunities and it allows them to exhibit some natural behaviors such as digging. I have noticed my geckos love digging in either whether it be a dig box or just the substrate in their cage. 
Digging can be quite enriching for them and especially if you actually have a bioactive setup because they can actually hunt the bugs living in the dirt. So it can be very enriching to them and a lot of them do enjoy it. For the most part, I find it fairly easy to clean as well. Normally leopard geckos kind of pick a spot to be their bathroom. So if you're using loose substrate, you can kind of just scoop that area out and then every now and then you'll of course want to do a full clean, but you can, it's pretty easy just to scoop their poops out and get rid of it. Now, of course, if you aren't cleaning regularly enough, loose substrate can become a place where bacteria can just grow and grow and grow. So you definitely need to make sure you're cleaning regularly. If you are using loose substrate, it does work to have a cleanup crew because they kind of help you with that. You do still need to do some work, but they do some of it for you. Another bonus to loose substrate is you can grow live plants in it. That's something I really like. I really, really love having live plants in my reptile enclosures. I think it just, you know, Know, it ties the whole thing together so it's always a bonus if you can have live plants in there in my opinion and then depending on the substrate that you do choose to use it can be more like their natural environment now this entirely depends on your substrate choice because some of the choices out there are nothing like their natural environment where some of them are more like their natural environment. So it really depends on your choice. And then again, there's the arguments about their joints. And now I have done more research onto the topic of leopard gecko joints when it comes to loose substrate. So we will talk about that a little bit. Certain loose substrates can actually be really bad for leopard gecko joints if it's a really soft substrate. If it's a really soft substrate, they're going to have a harder time gripping onto it and it's not going to be as sturdy underneath their feet and over time this can lead to joint problems. But if you're using a quality loose substrate that is designed for a more arid environment, then it's not so much of an issue because it does compact more, it's easier for them to grip onto and it doesn't really shift underneath their feet if that makes sense. So it's a lot better on their joints than if you're using a very soft substrate. And then of course some of the cons to loose substrate would be, as I mentioned, it can be a place for bacteria to grow if you're not cleaning it enough. And then of course there is always the risk of impaction. If you're keeping your leopard gecko on a loose substrate, of course there's always the risk that they could get some of that in their mouth and they can ingest it and it could end up in their stomachs and potentially lead to impaction. We will talk about this a little bit more but that's, you know, just one of the risks there. And then again, depending on your choice of substrate, it can affect their joints. It could be fine for them if you're using a good one, but if you're not, if you're using a not so good substrate, it might not be very good on their joints. So now that we know a few pros and cons of both loose and solid substrate, let's talk about the good solid substrate options and the good loose substrate options because there are good and bad ones out there. I'm going to go ahead and start with the solid options first because I do feel like that's what most people gravitate towards. So let's get talking about those. So when it comes to keeping leopard geckos on a solid substrate, there's four main options I can really think of, and that would be tile, which is what I use, shelf liner, which I have used in the past, paper towel, which I have used in the past, and reptile carpet, which I have used in the past. Now, out of these, there's really only one that I wouldn't recommend, and that is reptile carpet. So reptile carpet isn't really the ideal solid substrate, in my opinion, for a few reasons. One, it's a big sheet essentially of a bunch of tiny little fibers. Now when I was actually using reptile carpet, I would notice that my gecko's nails would get stuck in the carpet and if she was hunting a cricket for example, her teeth would sometimes also get caught in the carpet. So that was something I was not a fan of. And then the other reason is it is the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. These are fairly hard to clean regularly. You kind of have to put them through the washing machine if you want to get a good clean. So they're not the most sanitary as you know, You, if you're using something like this, you really have to be cleaning it often if you want to avoid bacteria growth. So for those reasons, I don't really recommend reptile carpet. Now when it comes to paper towel, shelf liner, and tile, I think that these can all work great. Just make sure you're using the right ones. Paper towel is pretty straightforward. You put the paper towel down and you change it out fairly often to make sure, you know, no bad stuff is growing on there. You wanna make sure the bacteria isn't building up. So make sure you change it often. And then when it comes to tile and shelf liner, these are pretty straightforward, but you wanna make sure you're using the right one. So when it comes to shelf 
shelf liner. Make sure you're using a non-adhesive one. They do make these shelf liners which can stick to the surface you put them on. You don't want to use those because the sticky material when um, heated up it can actually release like fumes and stuff which are really bad for your gecko. So make sure you're using non-stick shelf liner. And then if you want to use something like tile, make sure you're choosing one that isn't super like smooth and slippery because your gecko will probably have a hard time walking on that. Choose one that will allow them to have a little bit more of a grip on it. Now when it comes to solid substrates, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because there's so many options out there. I'm going to start out by listing the ones that you should 100% avoid no matter what. Number one, obvious one, probably being sand. Avoid pure sand at all costs really, and this includes natural sand, calcium sand, vitamin sand, they're all garbage when it comes to leopard geckos for the most part for multiple reasons. One, the big one being impaction, especially with calcium sand and vitamin sand because it encourages them to lick it, which then it all ends up inside of them, which, you know, really increases their risk of impaction, which isn't good. So avoid those at all costs. And then the other reason would be their joints. So sand is one of those substrates that I was kind of alluding to earlier with it being really soft, it's hard for them to grip, and it shifts underneath their feet, which just is not good on their joints in any way at all. Now sand, if you're using all natural sand, not calcium sand, not vitamin sand, those are garbage, pretend they don't even exist, but sand, it can be used when mixed with other substrates. So for example, a lot of people will make a sand soil mix. This is a lot better than just using pure sand and it's actually really a good option for a lot of people. If you take a little bit of sand and a little bit of soil and mix them together, it creates a lot better surface for the animal to live on than just pure sand. The other big one to avoid is crushed walnut shells. Now, sadly, a lot of people believe that because it is made out of walnut shells that it is digestible. I believe they advertise it as such, which is really, really unfortunate because it is not digestible at all. Walnut shells are pretty well wood. Imagine eating wood. It's not, your gecko's not going to digest walnut shells. <laughs> And so this does carry the same risk of sand when it comes to impaction, but it does also have an additional risk, which is, you know, it can literally tear your animal's insides open. So when you think about it, if you take a bunch of walnut shells and crush them down into tiny little pieces, there's going to be sharp ones. It's inevitable. You will end up with some pieces that are sharp, and if your gecko ingests them, it can literally tear their esophagus open, it can tear their stomach open, it can tear their intestines open. I would honestly say that crushed walnut shells are possibly one of the most dangerous substrates out there for this reason because they can literally tear your animal's insides to shreds. So please avoid things like walnut shells, pure sand, calcium sand, reptile sand at all costs, but don't worry, there are other options. Now, the other common loose substrate that I'm not a big fan of is EcoEarth. I'm not a fan of EcoEarth for leopard geckos for multiple reasons, one of them being is it is one of those very soft, hard to grip surfaces that I was talking about. If you've ever felt it, it is very soft. It's almost like fluffy in a way. It just compacts down. It's so soft and squishy, which may seem nice, but it's horrible for your animal's joints. They need a more solid surface to walk on. That's what their joints are designed for. They're not designed to be walking on these soft surfaces that don't allow them any sort of grip. So that's one reason Ego Earth on its own just really is not good for your animal's joints. But there's a few other reasons as well. Leopard geckos need very low humidity and when Eco Earth is dry, it becomes very dusty. Now I've used Eco Earth for multiple of my animals and I think it works for a lot of them, but leopard geckos, I just don't think it's one of them. I have seen animals get it stuck in their nostrils because of how dusty it is and they're breathing it in constantly and that's just not very good for them. You want to avoid dusty substrates for the most part. And now this substrate does also carry a risk of impact that is higher than some other loose substrate choices because of the long stringy coconut fiber pieces. These aren't ideal for an animal to be digesting 
you know it a lot of them do pass it just fine but it can sometimes result in issues especially just where it is these long stringy pieces as opposed to really tiny pieces that would pass very easily so I don't really think eco earth is the worst choice in the world it's definitely not on the same level as calcium sand but I really don't think it's the best option so those are most of the common store-bought loose substrate choices so now you might be thinking well if I can't use those what should I use? My main recommendation and what I am using myself is the Arcadia Arid Earth Mix. I've been using this for a few months and I really, really like it. I think that it works really well for leopard geckos because it's not super dusty. It does stay dry, so it doesn't have too much humidity in it. Um, and it does create a more solid surface for them. Even though it is a loose substrate, it does kind of compact very well. So when they're walking on it, it's not this soft, squishy surface that they can't grip. It's actually very easy for them to grip, I found. I think it works really well. But the downside to it is I don't believe you can get it in the United States. If you can, it's very limited on what places that do sell it. So my recommendation to those of you in the United States would be to check out the BioDudes Terra Sahara substrate. Now I cannot give any personal experience on this substrate because I have not used it. I cannot get it here in Canada, but I've done a lot of research on it. I've talked to other people who use it. I have seen a lot of other bioactive left gecko keepers using it and it is always their top recommendation in the United States so that is something that I would definitely look into again I can't give it like any personal recommendation based off experience but that is what seems to be the go-to choice for bioactive leopard gecko cages in the United States but then if you are in places like Canada for example or in the United Kingdom I would recommend the Arcadia Air Earth Mix. Now if neither of these options seem ideal for you you can always make your own mix and usually it's fairly simple you just want to take some natural sand and some organic topsoil and mix them together. Now sand when mixed Mixed with the soil is completely different than sand on its own so don't worry about that it's not the same as just keeping them on loose sand it is very very different so I believe that pretty well concludes everything I wanted to cover in this video hopefully this video was helpful to those of you who are interested in learning more about leopard gecko substrates and what might be the best choice for your gecko so after doing this experiment that I did where I experimented with different methods of leopard gecko care like I said earlier, my conclusion is just that they really all can work. Just make sure you're doing your research on your choice of substrate to make sure you're using it safely and correctly. I think that it's important to realize when it comes to animal care, there's not just one right thing to do it. So just because someone does something differently does not necessarily mean that it's wrong. If you are someone who firmly believes that solid substrate is best, that is great for you. Go ahead and use it. And then if you're someone who believes that loose substrate is best great for you go ahead and use it all I ask is to be respectful of other people recognize that people have different opinions for different reasons you know as long as someone has done research on the topic and has formed a solid opinion based off of that please respect it so thank you to those of you who watched like I said I hope this video was helpful I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this down below if you guys have any thoughts on substrates you know loose solid whatever let me know down below i would love to hear all of your opinions i think that's awesome to see what other people think so you know feel free to leave a comment all of that said thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel also be sure to check out all of my social media it will all be in the description below but once again thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you all next time